uh, yeah, that's and that leads to a good segue because what I had written down today, because we'll actually talk about the law for a minute, is premises cases. In premises cases, traditionally, I'm going to talk about it in a business sense. And, and what do we mean by that is you think about it. You slipped and fell in water at a grocery store. <clears throat> you tripped and fell because the floor was uneven in a in a business or you know they had so much stock you know in the aisleways it just didn't provide a, a clear path so those are generally called premises cases and it could be a slip and fall or a trip and fall type of case and we get calls like that quite often um you know all the time and, and what makes them really challenging is it's not a car wreck. You're stopped at a red light and you get rear-ended. The police are going to come. 999 times out of 1,000, they get the details of the of the accident correct. They are human beings, so occasionally they'll make an error. But a premises case is typically you're going to fall. You're going to slip in that water and you fall down. And most times there's not an employee at that store who, you know, witnessed it. And so you're going to get up if you can and go talk to a manager or go talk to an employee and say, hey, I was on aisle 12 and I slipped and fell and get an incident report. And so they're just taking it, you know, from your statement directly. So here's what you need to, to know. A, we hope you don't fall, you know, so be aware, be aware of your surroundings. You know, if you're in a grocery store or a super center store or something of that nature, you know, as you're going up and down the aisles, always kind of scan to make sure what you can see because the best prevention is not to fall at all. But if you fall, you know, <clears throat> the first thing to do is you need to make sure that you're okay. You know, hopefully it's not such a catastrophic injury that you lay there. Um, but if you can, if you fall, you need to get up, you know, look around, look at the floor, try to figure out what made, you know, what made you fall you want to get photographs of the scene immediately. You have to report it to a manager. You cannot leave that store without having reported it to a manager, having that manager walk with you back to the aisle where it happened. You want them to be able to see it. You want to be able to get names of that manager. You know, if they have another employee come over to clean it up or to put out a wet floor sign or something of that nature, you want to get that employee's name so that you have a record um, that's there, you know, because it's really important because you're going to call Schwartz and Associates at 601-988-8888 and say, hey, I fell in this store and this is the injury I had. And these are all questions we're going to ask you. Did you take pictures? Did you get an incident report? Did you talk to a manager? Did you talk to any employees? Do you have their names? And then another big thing is ask them, is there a videotape? You know, do you all videotape the you know, the surroundings because a videotape ends up being a huge, huge key piece of evidence when it's all said and done as to be able to prove, yep, you're just walking down the aisle and you fell exactly out of the blue. You just slip, boom, there go your feet, you're down. Or is there something more nefarious involved where you went through it and you didn't fall and then you come back and fell? So there's a lot of different issues out there. So really important that you do those basics so that you're able to have a potential claim as a result of the accident because the burden is on you. That business has an obligation to keep the premises reasonably safe. And that means that either they knew or should have known of the danger. And, and most things are people slip and fall. So someone's walking down the aisle, all of a sudden their feet go out from under them because the floor is wet. Well, is the floor wet because the store cleaned it? and didn't put out a wet floor sign or is the store wet is the floor wet because another shopper with their child came through and the little kid was drinking water and spilled water on the floor and then the business just doesn't know you know that it's there so then you get into well how long has that water been on the floor is it 
clear, where it doesn't look like any other shopping carts have come through it or other people have walked through it. You know, so maybe the business doesn't have notice that the water's there or is it a dirty spot? And clearly that water's been there for a few minutes. And then you can make <clears throat> the argument that there's constructive notice to the store that, hey, that water's been there for a while. They have to have a policy to go through and check their check their areas, you know, for dangerous conditions and so forth. So certainly a lot of factors that come into play. Those cases really kind of end up being a strikeout or a home run is really how they end up coming a lot of times with regard to the legal world because it's kind of like either A, you can't prove constructive knowledge or any knowledge at all in the business, and then the law is favorable to the employer or the business, or you're able to show absolutely they created the dangerous condition, they knew about the dangerous condition, and we've had it at the firm to where someone will fall, they'll go talk to the manager, They'll call over an employee once they go back there to clean it up, and that employee will be like, oh, yeah, I was supposed to clean that up five minutes ago or ten minutes ago. Well, that's an admission against interest right there by an employee. So that's why it's so important to get names of people that you are talking to and that you're hearing that are at the store when it comes to your case. So premises cases, really interesting, you know, um, can unfortunately cause some terrible accidents. Generally, when we see those, someone will break an ankle, will break a leg, will fall and hurt their shoulder, you know, or those kind of kind of injury so they can be really severe but more often than not we'll have people who call us and be like i was so embarrassed you know i fell at the store i was so embarrassed i just you know got up i left my shopping basket and i just walked out of the store you know you can't do that because that is just really putting a a damper on your case because at that point you haven't gotten all the facts that are there and it's too difficult to go back a few days later to the manager and say hey I fell in your store three days ago so you know as much as you're embarrassed and no one wants to fall you know do those simple things so that you can protect yourself and Schwartz and Associates we can sit there and, and investigate your case well the music's playing through through segment number two here on the Richard Schwartz and Associates injury lawyers legal power hour and we'll be right back.